Hi, I'd like to welcome everybody to the sixth installment of the UPA online conference. Tonight we have Mike Honorado, who is currently the Vice President of Publicity at Smith Publicity. In this role, he manages a publicity staff of more than a dozen professional publicists and directs client relations and media strategy for more than 90 clients. He works closely with publishing clients, including HarperCollins Leadership, Harper Horizons, Wiley, Nelson Books, and Kogan Page. Prior to this role, he spent time at John Wiley and Sons, where he was Associate Director of Publicity and worked with best-selling authors, including Kirk Douglas, Jim Moore, and Wayne Slater, Dr. Ruth, Teddy Bruschi, and Jack Cafferty. During this time, he also directed publicity efforts on behalf of brands, including For Dummies and Frommer's Travel. So we are lucky to have Mike with us tonight. We are going to talk about um, all kinds of publicity issues, and I'm going to turn it over to Mike now. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone uh, from Bucolic, New Jersey. Um, and thanks for letting me uh, uh, sit in here. And, um, you know, we work with a lot of, our clients are predominantly authors. Uh, we have some publishers, but for the most part, it's authors. And, you know, as you can imagine, since March, the discussions have been, what do we do? You know, how do we, how do we publish this book? How do we go forward? Do we go forward? Um, and, you know, what does, what does the fall look like? You know, publishing is a world that we all know this it is based on plans, right? We, we plan things out probably to the nth degree. And this is the one situation where we can't, we have no idea, you know, what, what the months ahead are gonna hold. Thankfully, things have sort of stabilized in terms of bookstores and, and Amazon not prioritizing the shipping of books for a while. Those things have, have somewhat solidified and publishers are moving ahead. But again, the problem is if the if book was postponed from March, April, May, or June, or even into the summer, now it's coming out in the fall, which as we know is, is, a, is a busy time. How do we get attention for our books? Um, how can we sort of penetrate the noise? Um, and as anybody who's you know, covering or watching books knows, the news cycle is used to be 24 hours. Now it's probably maybe 15 minutes. Um, and of course, uh, without getting political, if somebody tweets something who happens to sit in the White House, the cycle goes all over again. So it's, it's been a, a bit of a challenge, but there are things that we as folks in the industry can do and authors can do to help kind of get through that. So I wanted to talk through some of the, some of the things that we're, that we're, we're noticing about how to publish and promote, I should say, um, during this year of uncertainty. Um, so I'm gonna go through a couple of, of notes. I did not prepare a PowerPoint, so you're off the hook there. Um, and I, I do encourage you to interrupt during, however, what I'll do is I put two different times during what I'm saying that we can just pause for questions. You can you know, ask obviously what's going on. Um, so in no particular order, I, I wanted to start with, with blog tours um, because blog tours are a, a, a really number one impactful um, initiative nowadays. And number two, we're seeing a real good spike in sales and attention. So what a blog tour in essence is, um, is we, we have a list of bloggers that we work with, for example, We'll pitch them and say, would you like to be part of a blog tour for this particular book? Usually a short description, um, author bio, obviously any social media handles, links, et cetera. That's the extent of it. And then we build out a tour. The tour may take place over a month. Um, sometimes I've seen them contracted into almost a two week time. And the bloggers you're targeting are, again, it could be folks in a particular category. It might just be a overall fiction group of bloggers or nonfiction, whatever it might be, but they're working. And so what we do is we will we'll do it on, on a, you know, again, on a calendar basis, look at a month or so and try and get enough activity during the course of a couple of weeks. Um, 10 to 15 would, 15 is great, 20 is phenomenal. Um, and again, all we're doing is asking a blogger to be part of that. Usually what we'll do is uh, what we call a canned Q and A. So five or six questions that we ask of the author Either we provide the answers for them or we ask them to do so. And it's not, why did you write the book? But it's really more about getting into the issues and the themes of it. If it's a local book with a local hook, talking about, you know, again, that, that sort of that, that journey to get to that point. Um, bloggers love it. 
they, you know, they're used to the cadence, the language when we say blog tour, they know exactly what we mean. Um, and we actually, again, we can create even things like graphics that we can then ask, and we do ask our authors to share on their social media. Um, and this is done in Canva. So if you're familiar with Canva, basic stuff, cover image, designed out nicely, and then you're just listing the bloggers. Um, and, and we have, again, in the last probably six months, that has been the biggest, I think, change in promoting in this uncertainty has been the real prevalence and the success of blog tours. Um, so again, they're, they're the kind of thing where they seem intimidating when, you're, when, you, when you hear the word tour, but it's really not at all. It's a very well planned out um, initiative that can really get some good buzz and attention for a book. Um, I'm gonna, my eyes are gonna go back to my notes here for a moment, not being rude. Um, also, you know, it's, uh, the bloggers like them because we're giving them content. And this is also an opportunity to provide giveaways, the dreaded G word. Uh, we don't wanna give books away, we wanna sell as many as we can. However, we, we recognize that giveaways are just part of this, right? And so um, it's a nice way to, to, uh, to do that as well in terms of, of blog tours. Um, the, uh, the other thing I would say about that is not just self-published authors, we have seen traditionally published authors and publishing houses love them. We're working with Wattpad right now and Wattpad loves them. They're getting a ton of just a nice, you know, um, interest and, and, and some nice sales off of, off of blog tours. So fiction and nonfiction, give them, you know, some consideration. They don't work as well in nonfiction, I'll be honest, but we have seen, you know, some, uh, some interest and some buzz that way as well. Um, another, you know, uh, thing that we've been, been noticing, and I don't know if it's really much of a trend, but it's this, this issue of working with genre influencers. Um, I would call them basically non-media, right? So um, what do I mean by that? You know, if you, if you spend any time at all on, uh, on Instagram, for example, you know about the very powerful Bookstagram community, people that have built up their following um, on social media, and traditionally this is done on, on, uh, on Instagram, and, you know, sometimes even just a, if they're at a post, a, a cover of, you know, the cover of your book or a book, or even just mention it, uh, not even a glowing five-star review, that can really take off. Um, but the key is finding those influencers. So I mentioned Instagram, obviously, is the key there. Um, if, it's a, if it's a nonfiction book, there are other ways to go about that. There's, there's LinkedIn, for example, tapping into these communities. But it's knowing who those, those influencers are. That takes time to research them and see what kind of interaction they have. Um, check out their Goodreads profile, for example, if, if they have one and see what that's all about. But, you know, these, these genre influencers are not traditional media. It's not, you know, a blogger or reviewer or, uh, or somebody at PW. It could just be someone who's just known, you know, on Instagram or known on some other social media platform. Um, and that's, again, that's a challenge to find those folks, but they are absolutely worth reaching out to. They're worth connecting. Um, they can be super important, um, and they are part of that community. So, you know, be open to working with them. But recognize that it's not like a traditional, you know, outreach to, uh, to someone to review your book. It might be they ask you for, you know, some information on your background. What's your social media following? What's your, what, what is your platform like, right? Basically, if I want to, you know, uh, promote your book, what am I getting out of this is what they're asking you, right? Uh, and that's unfortunately the name of the game when it comes to a lot of what we're doing here. Um, but the, the genre influencers, the, the story I always tell is many, many years ago when I was at Wiley, I was working on a diet book and the book wasn't doing too well. It just was another run of the mill diet book. But somebody, one of the paparazzi photographed, I forget the celebrity, it may have been Gwyneth Paltrow, some major celebrity with a copy of the book under her arm in California. We got more sales out of that book lifetime of over that photo than we did for any promotion that we ever did on the PR marketing side. Now that's an extreme example, of course, but sometimes those kinds of things can really, you know, sort of move the needle. Um, we have a lot of uh, business authors who rather than ask somebody for a testimonial or ask somebody for, you know, an excerpt or, or a forward, whatever they're doing, they'll say, would you be willing to share my book on your social media platform? Would you, you know, can you show my cover? Can you tweet out, um, you know, a, a cover image, something along those lines? Those things can matter too, because you're in essence tapping into somebody else's already established community. And I know you, as authors, you've, you've heard the term platform, right? So many times, so you know it, but um, those are kinds of, you know, those are little things. And I think the biggest challenge for authors and, and that we have found is sometimes people are just sort of reticent to ask those questions. Um, and the worst thing they could say is no. 
So it's always worth, you know, worth thinking that through, but, but really spend time to identify who those influencers are. Uh, so you, so you make sure that you're going after people that are appropriate for you. Um, anybody have any questions at this point? I, I want to make sure that, that you're getting as much out of this as, as possible. So I want to ask you, going to pause early on here to see if there are any questions I might answer. So Mike, I have a question. Sure. Trying to get the video back on, but it's not coming. Uh, anyway, I was wondering if you um, could share a, a, a link or some way that we could see a, um, a blog tour. Like how could we see a blog tour? Yeah, um, I actually have, and I'm fine to send this to all you afterwards. I have a, um, some, a series of graphics and on the graphics, they actually have the, um, the, 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 the person's blog handle name, if you will. And you can actually see how that looks. Typically what it'll look like it is uh, a cover image. Um, and then again, if it's a Q and A, it'll have, you know, those questions and answers already there. Sometimes an author photo is great too. Um, and that's really it. And sometimes, you know, on first blush, you look at these blogs and you're saying, oh boy, this is a terrible looking site. And maybe it is, maybe the design element is not part of this, but it's really the attention that you get from that. Um, and it's be able to share those. So I can share these graphics and you can get a good look at how they're created and, and the authors themselves, we have found our authors love using these graphics because it's a nice way to sort of share that story. So it's just kind of a, a bit of a uh, package that you put together and then you distribute it to these different bloggers, they share it and boom. That's okay. it. So I'll say, you know, hey, Jane Doe, we do, you know, do you want to be part of the blog tour for this particular book? We're book, we're, you know, looking at dates in, you know, November. And mm -hmm. they'll say, yeah, I'll take the 10th. That's all it is. And then you, you send them, again, the cover image, photo, description. And then usually, you know, that day, if it hasn't run, you sort of prod them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, you know, some of these bloggers are very good at this. They, they, this is what they do. So they're very, it's almost like an editorial calendar. They know exactly when to post things. Um, the only thing that they ask of us on the publicity side is, hey, can you help amplify this? Can you help share this? And we're always happy to do that. Yeah, and so they're they're sharing the information with the author. You're sharing information about their blog. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Savvy. I have a question. Yes. Do you ever feel like there's a catch twenty two situation where uh, you can't get a really good following for a platform unless you're already well known, and you can't get well known because you don't have a big following on your platform? <laughs> do you ever run into that? Oh, absolutely. It's the same thing when you're trying to find a job and they say, well, well, we, we want somebody with experience. Well, I need a job to get the experience, right? So, you know, it is, listen, a platform is huge. And I've been in, you know, enough meetings over the last 20 years where that's the first question that is asked. So, you know, what are some ways around that? You know, number one, I think is, is don't try and be all platforms all the time. You know, don't say I'm going to be on all these, I'm going to be on these five, you know, social media handles and I have a website. Pick one, you know, maybe it's Instagram, maybe it's Twitter um, and really spend time on that. And maybe it's your website as well, obviously. Right. And, you know, the thing about platform, it takes time to build. Right. So oftentimes I'll, I'll get authors will say, I'm, you know, I'm going to develop this platform as the book comes out. And I'm saying you should have been doing this a year back. So what I would suggest is don't try and again, get on Instagram, Facebook, all these things right away. Just pick one or two platforms and work on those. The best way to sort of kind of build th these platforms is to see what other either similar authors or what other folks are doing themselves, see who they're following. So one of the first things I did when I got into publishing was I didn't really have many contacts. So I went into, I went to Publishers Weekly, uh, Weekly's Twitter handle back in 2003, it wasn't much, but, and I saw who they were following and I said, okay, I'm going to follow those people. And then I built that out to follow publishers that I, I was interested in following and then authors and then reviewers, and then media at large. And lo and behold, after a certain amount of time, I built up that platform. Um, I will tell you that it is a full-time job. And you know, that's another challenge is, is how to you know, sort of cultivate and maintain that platform while doing other, you know, the things you need to do like pay the bills, right? So it's, it, it does take time, but I would say rather than make it so overwhelming, just focus on one or two things to really get that platform going. You mentioned before on the blog tours that they're not so interested in, oh, you know, the, the background to how you got the idea for the story, but rather sort of the themes, that sort of thing. Is that also the kind of thing that people want to see on your platforms? 
there is, you know, there, there are people that I, I'm always a fan, you know, as someone who loves books and loves working with authors, mm. I'm always interested in finding out how they said, you know, I'm going to sit down and start, I'm going to write this book. You know, what was their writing journey like? And there are some platforms, there are some blogs and podcasts, especially, that are really more about the author's writing process. Mm -hmm. uh, what I meant by, you know, one of the questions not being, why'd you write this book? That's just a, it's just a tired question. Uh, you know, it could be, mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was uh, inspired to write this book by X or, you know, mm -hmm. because I, because of this, I decided I needed to sit down and create this, this journey. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I think that's an interesting part of it. Um, people want to know why someone who may not have a literary background or someone who's been a teacher for 40 years or someone who, yeah. you know, who's 25 and all of a sudden has written three books. I think they want to know how you got to that point. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's an interesting part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes the news media, when, when talking about traditional media, that's what makes them respond, mm -hmm. um, especially on the local side is, you know, what was that journey like? I was a, you know, I was um, a sanitation worker for 20 years and decided that's it, I'm done, I quit and, and here I am. And I've created this, this universe, this, these mm -hmm. characters. And that's, that's an interesting story. Thank you. Great. Um, Back to my notes. Moving on to, uh, to to giveaways, and I mentioned the dreaded G word only because I spent so many times in meetings where people would say, you, "We we can't give books away. We're trying to sell them." And yes, that is exactly true. Um, the thing about giveaways, though, it's it's I hate to say this, a small price to pay for buzz and for attention. Um, and oftentimes, you know, we'll have media who'll say to us, "Yeah, that's great. Send us a review copy." Um, and we'll have to do that, you know, and, and we vet them, you know, traditionally, if it's, if it's a blogger that we're not quite certain, um, if they're on the up and up, we'll check out their site. Um, and we, sometimes we, we won't send a copy. Sometimes we will it really depends, but, um, it's, it's one of the things that we must be doing nowadays. Um, we used to back in the day, we used to send physical books to reviewers, to people. Now, a lot of folks are either not in the office, uh, Folks working from home and, they, and their mailboxes can't accommodate 25 books a day. So we'll, you know, make do with PDFs. Uh, we'll make do with audiobooks, believe it or not. That's, that's been a nice little surge in that, getting, you know, getting comping audiobooks for people. Um, and last ditch effort is a PDF, right? So getting them the content, but, but it's, it oftentimes requires giving it rather than selling it, which is, which is not fun, but we recognize it's, it's part of it. Um, it's great for book clubs. It's great for building that awareness. Um, and you know, one of the, I mentioned earlier talking about uh, blog tours is, is, is doing a giveaway. If you have a book in a series, uh, maybe you're working on promoting book number three and there's, there's a series of books, offer the previous two books to somebody if they're interested, um, or, or vice versa. You know, if you're, if you're working on the first book, but there are others, offer them up as well. Um, but that, that kind of, that kind of promotion can really help. Media expects it, bloggers love it. Um, and it just, it's good for that sort of awareness part of it. And for book clubs, especially if you're able to tap into local book club networks, be prepared to comp five or six books or whatever the number might be for them. Um, that's a nice thing to do as well. And again, we, we want to be judicious in that amount, but we want to be able to provide that content. Uh, we have had success with providing maybe a chapter to somebody, you know, a PDF, or whatever, you're, you know, uh, if you're not willing or not, not able to give the full book but giveaways are an important part of it. We have even found if we have a, a, a contact on the media side who's not willing to do a review, <laughs> maybe they're too full or they, they just don't, I'll say to them, can I offer you five books for, for a giveaway for your listeners? If it's a podcast or radio, um, you know, can I offer you five books? And they'll jump on that. Sure, absolutely, please, thank you. You know, that kind of thing. And again, it's just, it's just a nice way to get the word out. I would be, you know, targeted and strategic here. I wouldn't just give that to any book, you know, anybody on the street corner, but that's another way for you to sort of get that, get that content out there. Um, excerpts are great, you know, too, because you can sort of tease people, you know, uh, uh, with, you know, maybe an excerpt of a previous book or maybe a chunk of, of, you know, they like getting those kinds of things um, and they respond well to it. So that's another way to, uh, to think about it. You know, giveaways are great on social media. If you are active on a particular platform, you can offer up review copies and giveaways. Hey, you know, um, we'd love, you know, the first, five people that, that uh, either send in a photo of them holding the cover of the book will get the next book in the series or something along those lines. Um, you know, we have, we, we've had some business authors who will say, you know, to, on, their, on their platforms, 
you know, if you, uh, if you, if you uh, send in this, or if you, if you, if it's a book about workplace culture, if you share a couple of stories about some of your workplace culture experiences, you know, I'll send you a box of books for your office, you know, things like that um, can really work. There are local associations, museums, organizations. Um, if it's a book about pets and there's, there's a local, you know, animal rescue, um, it's comping and, you know, giving some, you know, some books for them, for their members, for their audience, thinking about not just, you know, media, but going directly to, you know, to those, those consumers can be a nice way to go about that. So as you're looking at this, think about what audience, what people, what groups would benefit from your book and your story. Um, and you can, you know, sort of uh, hit them that way. Byline articles. I don't think there's anything more important uh, that I'm going to talk about besides our, you know, besides social media than byline articles. What they mean simply, it's, you know, it's content written by you, uh, whether it be an op-ed, an opinion piece, or just an article on a topic, on a theme um, that has your name on it, that is given to media for them to run. It's free content for them. Um, authors typically are not compensated for that. But the huge benefit is obviously you know you've read how many media outlets and how many bloggers they're, they're struggling to keep you know to keep their own ends meeting right so um, they're looking for content and this is a great way to go about it um, in the business realm or in the nonfiction realm especially it is paramount we have to do articles and I have a lot of authors who say I don't want to write I just wrote a book I get that but now but now comes the hard part now you need to promote it and sell it and you need to be writing. Um, and I'm talking between 500 and 1,000 words, 1,000 being the, probably the cap. Um, it can range from 300 to 500 words. Uh, again, it could be true opinion pieces about you know, a local news, current events, politics, what, whatever. Or it might just be a piece based on something that's happening in the news. Um, mm -hmm. I'm working with an activist right now at, at, in, in the Seattle area, and his book is all about how people can find the, I think I have a copy somewhere, find the undercurrents of change that matter to them, whether it be climate change, or whether it be Black Lives Matter, whatever it is, finding the way for you to get involved. And so he's written a couple of op-eds. We had one placed in Market Watch. We're trying to shop one around at Wall Street Journal and some others um, to really you know, give them that content. Um, and these are pieces that are typically, what I'll say to authors is don't, it, and it can't be salesy, it can't be in my book, I write, it can't be any of the, it has to be, you know, again, more of an article um, and hyperlink to sources. If you, if you quote a study, you know, a recent study of teachers found that 25% XYZ, put that study in there. All those links sort of back that up. Um, there, it's crucial. It is one of the most important things that you can do nowadays, uh, whether it be, you know, either doing it proactive or pitching somebody first and then getting interested in writing that. But it is, it is an, a really important part of all the, all the, the promotion that we do. Um, and it's, you know, the biggest challenge too is making it exclusive. So sometimes you've written a couple of pieces on, a, on the book and you're like, I, I don't know how else I can make this exclusive. And the, uh, the rule of thumb is that to be 60% new content to be considered exclusive. Um, and media and bloggers, they will check. There are different things you can go online and you can actually <laughs> upload a piece yeah. And it will search the web and see if, and I've gotten many pieces of kickback and, and from, from, you know, bloggers or even from traditional media saying, no, there's too much, uh, I'm seeing too much content because mm -hmm. it'll comb your website. It'll comb your blog. It'll comb LinkedIn. If you have it on those three places, they will not consider it exclusive. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, and so if you're an active blogger, which you should be, um, you know, maybe rather than post something to your blog at first, hey, maybe shop it around to a few people, maybe, you know, upload it and submit it to a few places to see if, um, if they'll bite. If not, then put it on your blog, then put it on LinkedIn. Um, and, you know, there are a variety of, uh, of places that you can, say, you can sign up to be contributors and just post um, at will. So Elephant Journal, one word is a really good site for that. Thrive Global which you may know of, it's a wonderful platform. Uh, those two particular platforms, you can just sign up and actually post pieces and they're still an editorial process. Um, but if it's well-written, they'll accept it. And then you have that link and it looks great. Hey, my uh, guy, I have like several questions. One, can you go over again, was it Elephant Journal and then Thrive? Thrive Global. 
Globe. So, uh, T H. Mm -hmm. No, sorry, it's, it's late in the day, and my Jersey accent's kicking in. It's thriveglobal.com. Okay. Uh, and the other one was Elephant Journal. Yeah. Yeah. And then, the Elephant Journal piece, just for a quick moment. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about that is that requires people to upvote, which means you post an article or an excerpt, whatever you do. Um, and you want to then share that with your network and encourage them to read the piece. They have metrics on that website mm -hmm. that will see how many people have read it. And the more it gets read, the more it gets elevated and discovered, right? So um, these are two, when you're on Thrive Global, there'll be a little uh, button in the upper right-hand corner that will say sign up. And the process is quite easy, but you have the ability to sign up and then post articles that you're, um, or contributed pieces. Again, there is a gatekeeper and some of them have been rejected. Um, but for the most part, they'll, they'll take it if it's well-written and if it speaks to their audience. And I just wanted to confirm that I'm, I'm understanding the entire concept, which is mm. um, writing articles which may only be tangentially related to the topic of your book. Just the idea that you're somebody out there writing and then somewhere in that or maybe in the byline, it's, by the way, author of blah. Bingo. So in your okay. bio... You want to, okay. you know, the first thing you want to do is your name and, you know, your name, author of, yeah. and then everything else that is your credentials. A lot of authors put the book at the end, and what happens yes. is it gets cut off. So it's it's everything but the but that. But that is that is um, really important to put that part in your bio. If yeah. you can hyperlink within that, you know, put your website or or mm -hmm. Amazon or whatever bookseller you want, but mm -hmm. um, definitely want to include that as well. Okay. Fascinating. You know, on the nonfiction side, bylines are, are huge right now. Um, I have a lot of authors in the political space that we just can't get them placed, first of all, because of all the noise. But it's, there, are, there are dedicated opinion and commentary editors um, on all websites uh, that will take those kinds of pieces. Um, all your local newspapers, they still exist, thank God. Uh, they will usually either a letter to the editor or, or an op-ed you can, you can post um, or submit Generally, it's like, it'll be like a general email, you know, um, you know, submissions at whatever.com. Uh, but some of them will have a process where you have to actually go ahead and do that. You know, the web is a great resource for this nowadays. It used to be where we had, you know, we had these old media guides, books, we had to, you know, kind of thumb through. Now everything's on there. If you Google, you know, for example, uh, you know, local op-ed editors or, or the town, you'll get a bunch of things. Um, and there is a process and usually some places it's 24 hours they'll review it and they'll and they'll let you know and then you can go on to other places some it's 48 i was pitching one today to education week that said they they'll get back to me in two weeks and that's not going to work because we have other things we have to do so um but again th th there is a, an editorial gatekeeper on on those um and again where bylines can really help is you mentioned platform earlier someone and they will someone googles your name and the book title they you want to there to be some activity that comes up. Um, and even if it's a website that you're like, oh, this looks kind of sketchy, but they're willing to run my piece, of course, you know, sort of rectify that, but, but do it, go for it, uh, because it'll get, it'll get that SEO going and that'll help your name, the book and all that, the title. These are all important things to do for platform. Again, 500 to 1,000 words, don't get so worked mm -hmm. up. I, I had an author today sent me one that was 1,600 words. And it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, but, uh, but it was a great piece, and we got it placed. Um, it was his more of a, uh, it's a business cultural leadership book, but it's a wonderful piece, and we got it written. And, and um, it also takes a couple of times to get the, get the pattern down uh, because your first desire is going to write, you know, is going to be to make it all about the book. Um, and they'll kick it back for being too promotional. They'll kick it back for being too salesy. And it's the, it's the biggest catch 22 to use that phrase again, because you want to get the name of the book out and, and your message out, but they will, uh, they will dismiss it out of hand if it's too, if it's too salesy. So just caution you on that. Um, let's see here. I want to talk about social media <laughs> because it, it, first of all, it's, it's the third rail and everything. Um, if you take nothing away from, anything I say tonight, please take this. And that is that social media is paramount to your book success. It doesn't need to be every single platform. It needs to be one. It needs to be managed well. And in this day and age where we can't do bookstore events and we can't do in-person events and we don't know, you know how we're gonna be able to, to, you know, to connect with our audience, the one thing that has still been going on since March, fingers crossed, has been Wi-Fi, internet, and again, social media. Um, 
we work with a lot of authors who don't have a platform and they say to us, all right, we want to get going. What do you suggest? And I mentioned this earlier, pick one. If you can pick two, great, but focus on one. Um, and I wouldn't make that one be Facebook simply because Facebook, as we all know, first of all, you're more apt to, you know, you're not going to really interact with a friend or family member who's selling something because you're, you're going to support them anyway. Um, it's a hard time reaching people that you're not in your network. Um, I think if you're a fiction author, Instagram is king. It's powerful. Um, it is important. We had an author who wrote a, it was a fiction book about uh, a 1930s New York City and the film noir scene. And he said, I don't know what to post on Instagram. I really want to be on there. I don't know what to post. So we talked to him about, why don't you post old movie posters? Why don't you post old, you know, if, you, if it, there's something that's interesting that you see uh, when you're out and about with your mask on, social distance, whatever it might be, you know, something that, that speaks to the subject matter versus just about the book. Um, and so Instagram is, is really important in that. If you're a nonfiction author, if you're a business author, of course, you know LinkedIn. But if you're a nonfiction author in other places, again, think about Twitter, which I know is a black hole. I get it. Um, I happen to love Twitter in, in my business being a publicist. I see, first of all, I, you know, I'm connected with reviewers directly. I could see what they're looking for. Um, I can see what, you know, what books are being covered, what Pamela Paul is tweeting about. I read the links that she sends around. Um, these are all important things to do. Um, Twitter is very much like a cocktail party. You don't just go up to somebody and start talking when there's a group, you sort of kind of hover and you wait and see where the conversation goes. And then when appropriate, you offer your, your, your opinion, your commentary, um, do that. And also be prepared to engage people. So Twitter, uh, so, well, Twitter is, but social media is not a one way street. It's gotta be two ways. Comment on other authors' posts, you know, interact with other authors, um, with, with, Anybody else in the industry, it might be a reviewer or a bookseller you may find on there. Um, those are all things that are important to do. And again, it's, the, it's the, really the one lifeblood that we have, a lifeline right now, we should say, to the outside world. Um, the thing about social media that it's not so much, it's not so important about followers. Yes, of course, that's important. It's really about engagement. You know, how many likes and comments and buzz, frankly, are your posts generating? Are you being involved with other authors? Um, and you know, they're not competitors of yours. They're other folks who are trying to make it successfully as well. Right. So, so are you engaging with, with, with people on social media? Um, there are influencers and media on there as well. Um, if you do, for example, get a traditionally, um, uh, reviewed outlet to, to take your book and review it, thank them on social media and be sure to tag them. They love that. Um, it seems like a basic step, but it's an important one to do. They love the PR that you're doing for them. And it just, it's, it's a nice way to sort of keep that, that connection going. Um, you know, another part of social media, which oftentimes authors don't think of is their own website. Um, so it, again, think about your website, what the message is on there. Is it updated? Um, if you have a section that you, for example, may have where, where your blogs are featured, do you, well, I should say, do you have a section for your blogs? And if you don't get one, and secondly, is it updated? Um, don't make it be, well, it's, you know, six years old or whatever it is, which sometimes happens. Uh, keep your website updated. Um, and, you know, with, with new content, with, um, with, with Q and A's yourself, just things that when, you know, it's, it's your one thing that it's, your, it's your 24 hour a day, seven day a week salesperson. So you want to make your website um, as up to date as possible and don't be so, um, so enamored with design. I mean, there are so many, you know, Wix and others, you know, so many basic free, even WordPress um, can do a nice, clean, basic site that doesn't need to be, you know, with video and audio and all this sort of thing. It could just be straightforward, but it's updated. You're showing people that will go to it. They'll find it that you're taking that part of your author promotion seriously. Uh, video is great. You know, we, we, we love that if, um, you know, if, if you're on, um, if you have something that you want to share either on, on, on Instagram live or on Facebook live, even, you know, you know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute long, um, you know, it could be great thanking reviewers could be talking about your next project. I just got the cover back uh, for my new book. I'm excited to share that with you. Things like that. Uh, videos can be, can be really powerful. Um, uh, people love videos. Um, so don't be afraid to any, it can be done, you know, with your phone. Doesn't need to be anything too fancy. Um, and these kinds of things just go a long way to connecting you directly to your readers. 
social media. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Where did you say Good, was that, uh, the, water. the prime place to post the, those videos on mm -hmm. your own website or your website? Absolutely. I might suggest even if you have enough of them, you might want to create a tab that says video, um, mm -hmm. but you don't need to. It could just be, you know, be within, you know, embedded in the site. Um, but if you're on Instagram, for example, Instagram live, uh, which I admit I have not done, um, but it's a quick way to sort of, you know, turn your, your phone into a camera studio. Um, and we do that a lot when we work with so many authors um, that when their books come out, what we'll do is we'll share a, an Instagram story, congratulating them on their book. You know, today's the pub date for such and such. And, um, and those posts get a lot of likes. And so, um, and Facebook too, as you know, has a, has a live um, platform or a section where you can, again, go live and, and record something. We have an author now who's working with, um, with, a, with a lot of school kids about all the racial tensions in the, in the US. Mm -hmm. And so what he does is when something happens in the news and it's happening a lot, he will go live with a 30 second video about his, his opinions on what he's hearing and feeling mm -hmm. and seeing. Um, it's, it's a great way for him, you know, him to get his name out there directly and people are responding to it. Mm -hmm. But also if you don't, you know, the thing about a social media, the key word is authentic. If you don't, you know, if it's not authentic for you to do a video, don't do it. Mm -hmm. If it's not authentic for you to, to do it, you know, something that, whether it be a, um, a post on, on Twitter, whatever it is, don't do it. You know, because if you're, if it's, if it's not authentic to you and your message, it will become a chore and it become one that you eventually drop off of. Um, and I will tell you in terms of post frequency, Typically, Twitter is several times a day, believe it or not, uh, several times a day. Instagram, several times a week, roughly. Um, and Facebook, probably, you know, a little less than that. Um, and if you're on LinkedIn, for example, which is one that shouldn't be dismissed, but that's probably a little less, maybe once a week or so on LinkedIn. Um, but, you know, it's really the frequency. And a lot of authors say, I don't know what to post. <laughs> you know, it's, an, it's like a sort of an editorial calendar. Um, so that's the, that's the biggest challenge with, with, with social media is finding enough content to post. Okay. Um, the final point that I have here, and then we'll go to Q and a, if there's any more, um, are virtual book events, which are becoming really mainstream. I love, uh, you know, I hate to say this. I love this about COVID. It sounds terrible. Um, but what I love about what, what's happening is our industry has changed. And it used to be that you could only see or hear an author if you were in the local market they were in. Um, so there's a great author in Chicago. I may not you know, be able to see or hear her here in New Jersey, but now with Zoom and with all these virtual events, you can be associated with any author you know, in this country and around the world. And I think that's a great thing. It's, it's exposed authors and their books to just a wider range of people. Um, they're done via Zoom like this. They're done via Skype sometimes. Um, it doesn't need to be anything too fancy. Think maybe 30 minutes. You know, maybe you read, you know, uh, a, a little chunk of the book, open it up for questions, you know, that type of thing. Um, still consider it like you would a, an in-person event. So still promote it and still want to get people to sign up. Uh, you want to get a nice, you know, a number of, of uh, followers and attendees. Uh, but that's it. It doesn't need to be anything too, you know, too fancy. We have seen the last couple of months a lot of virtual events are now associated with booksellers to bring in the all-important book part of this. Um, for example, uh, Elliott Bay Books in Seattle, a wonderful place. Um, they're doing, they're actually partnering with a lot of authors for virtual events to sell the books. So we're getting that book sale component now part of that, and that's huge. Um, but virtual events are still happening. Uh, book clubs are still happening. You know, so don't dismiss those, those initiatives just because we can't in some places get together. Um, and also, you know, query other local authors. Maybe there's another author in your genre um, that you can maybe partner with and do some sort of an event. Maybe there's an association. I think somebody mentioned earlier there's a local, um, a local either uh, event or something that you're a local regional book that you're working on about the history of a certain area. Maybe there's, a, there's an historical society you can tap into. Um, maybe there's a chamber of commerce, you know, things like that 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 you can work on and say, listen, I'd be happy to do a reading or, you know, do a talk for your members, for your listeners, for your audience. Um, you know, they, they love those kinds of things. A lot of them have that kinds of programming and you, and you may know that already. So, you know, don't be hesitant to, to sort of go after some of those local 
already built in networks, establishments, et cetera. Um, and I mentioned just one last point um, is real, again, is the really important part of if you do get an event lined up is promoting it, right? So what, you know, just, they're gonna wanna know if you, if you do partner with a venue, for example, or anybody else, they're gonna wanna know who can you help bring to the table for this. Um, so, you know, if you can put on, on social media, tap into a network, if you have an email list, if you send, if you send out a newsletter uh, to friends and family, you know, um, and to your, and to your community, your network, you know, put that in there. Events are great. They're happening. As I said, they're, they're, um, they're for a while they weren't, and it was, we were all a little worried. Now that they've, they've, you know, there's a lot of sort of evolution of them, but they're coming around there and they're, and they're getting smarter and, and better. And so, uh, it's still worth doing and still worth actually reaching out to people for them. Questions. On anything I mentioned or anything I didn't mention, was there anything that you, a topic that I did not mention that anybody has uh, wants you know some background on or? Okay. I, I, yeah. you're, you're just giving me ideas. I mean, I don't know that I would do anything at the moment, but like that promoting event, I typically write for um, middle grade <laughs> students, kind of narrative nonfiction things that mm -hmm. have play in the classroom for instruction. Mm. So I could see an event where you would target uh, teachers, maybe read some, maybe, um, you know, talk about the content a bit, and then offer up some instructional activities that could go along with it. So it would have, you know, generate interest and have value for them potentially. That's right. And maybe, you know, uh, we know there's a lot of schools that are either hybrid, right, where they're in mm -hmm. class or they're yeah. at home or both you know, maybe there's a way um, for you to be able to, you know, give the teachers a break for an hour and, and read yes. from the book or, you know, interact with the kids that way um, mm -hmm. would be great. And I think that's, you know, those kinds of things are what I'm talking about. The way to, you know, think about mm -hmm. how to give, give back a little bit in terms of value add to the community. And that's a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, I mean, I think it's, it's listen, if we were talking in, in April, um, you know, it would have been a, probably a different conversation because we didn't know, uh, I guess we still don't, but at that point, we didn't know where this is going. You know, the industry is resilient, you know, it's been around for how many hundreds of years and um, yeah, that's going to be ebbs and flows and it's going to be some pitfalls along the way. We know how many independent bookstores are not making it and that's, a, that's horrific, but um, hopefully, you know, if the, if the world, if the publishing world anyway, continues to be where it is, you know, maybe the, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay at some point, but, um, it's, it's, it's a nervy time, you know, and there's, it's a, it's an angst ridden time for, for anybody, uh, especially if you're put, putting a book, a book forth right during this time. Um, but there are people buying books and people still want books and media still requires them. So keep writing. All right. Well, thank you. Does anybody have any last minute questions for Mike? But Mike, I am, um, could we just go back to the blog tour idea sure. for a minute? Um, I, I remember hearing about blog tours maybe 10, 12 years ago for the first time. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to me like they just sounded like so much work because I thought that you had to like go to all these blogs and do written interviews or video interviews or audio interviews, but you're saying it's just like you just post a graphic to all these blogs. So have they evolved or changed or are there ways they they've determined that blog tours don't work? Yeah. So they have absolutely evolved. Um, and now, you know, listen, all those things you mentioned, video and audio, they, those can all be done, but the bare minimum, um, that still is successful and still works is, you know, providing again, a paragraph on the book. Um, a, the, the author Q and A is actually really important. And I sort of glossed over that before uh, I mentioned five or six questions, roughly um, that's sort of the interview. Um, and in lieu of having to have this blogger either call you or do an email interview, that's what we give them. So you'll want to really think, think creatively about the, those questions. But it's creating the, the, that list of questions. Um, again, the blurb, the list, the cover image, your photo, um, if you want, and, and, and promote and say, listen, you know, I'm arranging a blog tour for, month, for the month of November or December, whatever it is. 
Um, think about tie-ins that you might do. If it's, a, for example, a book that has a holiday theme, think about December, um, you know, kind of think about that way um, and say, I'm, I'm arranging a book tour, would love for you to be a part of it. Here are the dates that are open. This is where you do a little, a little sort of fudging um, and say, you know, it's, it's, it's getting quite busy, but I have the 10th open, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and they all res they're quick to respond. They'll say, that's great. You know, we'd love to, you know, to be part of that, send me all the ancillaries. Um, we spent a lot of time sort of mining our blog tour list, you know? Um, so what I mean by that is after we do one, okay, what was, you know, how'd that work? Where did they follow through? Uh, Cause some don't, you know, and when they did, what does it look like? How did that come out? Um, and so that takes a little time to sort of research that. But if you're an author in this network, you may know some of these blogs, you may follow them yourself, right? So th that may be an easier pro uh, uh, sort of issue, but I would, don't forget about sort of spending time mining that list, even when you're not promoting um, and kind of going back and, and, and checking that out and making sure that they're doing right by you. Okay, thanks. So it, it can basically be a, I don't like the term, but a cookie cutter thing that you, you pass out to all these bloggers. So I don't have to make everyone unique because I'm assuming that their audiences are all different. It's not That's the same correct. people on every blog. So. That's correct. And okay. Yeah, and not to sort of, you're right, I don't want to dumb down the process or sort of, you know, uh, but it is, it is cookie cutter. It is, you're, you're giving them this package of, of it. And because the, the easier you make it for them, the more likely they are to actually feature and include it. Okay, um, right. As we always say with working with reporters, you know, the more, the more angles in the story I can give a reporter at the New York Times or at whatever, the more apt they are to write it, right? So, um, but that, that, that's exactly it. It's just, it, it's giving them all of that. Here it is, you know, and, and then they may say to you, that's great, would you mind, you know, would you be willing to do this? Or could we swap out these questions? And, and that's fine, but at least you, you've gotten them, you know, sort of on board that way. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right. Well, Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, I know I you've given me a lot of ideas. So we want to thank you for being here and of course it's it's daunting. You know, it's daunting now to all of a sudden realize now what do I do? You know, and and, and I think the number one thing is don't panic. Um, and number two, it's okay, well, let's just figure this out there. Again, there are still, there's still an appetite for books. I, I'm sure you do too. I read constantly how, well, it's, I guess it fluctuates every day, but you know, the numbers for, you know, print sales go up one week and down the next and up one week, but it's, it's going up. It's not always only going down. Right. And so that's, that's a good thing. And I think recognize that we're all trying to figure this out. Nobody knows. Um, I worked in publishing right around nine 11. And that was obviously horrific, but the difference was it sort of ended, right? You know, by the week after the, we were starting to get back on our feet, this has just been a prolonged, we don't know the end. And, it, and there's a lot of ebbs and flows and every, every part of the country is different. So that's another, you know, here on the East Coast, it was during, you know, March, April, May, it was just a ghost town outside. Now it's like, everybody's back to normal. Um, and so it just, it, it, it's, a, it's an unnerving time for that reason, because as I said before, as publishers, we can't plan and that's what we live our lives on. Do you also find that people are willing to try more new things right now? Like with promotion, with everything? Because I've noticed that with a few things where people are like, well, I wouldn't normally try this, but. Yeah, you know, I, I think so. I think they're, I think media especially recognizes that they need, they need content. So they're willing to, to, you know, change up what they normally do. I think it also depends on authors being willing to, you know, sort of take a step out on, you know, on a limb um, a little bit. And maybe, you know, in, in a normal world, I wouldn't be a part of this event, but maybe I should because I can get in front of a new audience, right? So um, I have seen, you know, seen a little bit of people sort of breaking out of their normal mold because they've, they've had to. I think it's also maybe important for people to realize, hey, if I haven't done this before, I maybe can. Right. Well, you know, I mean, we <laughs> to do a virtual book <laughs> event, yeah, was like, you know, but now now they're almost commonplace, right? And um, that's, again, I, I know it's a weird, it's, it's weird to say that's a good thing come from COVID, but 
I truly believe that because I think we're, we're able to really, you know, it's, it's, it's a much different community now than it used to be. Um, and that's only a good thing. It reminds me, it's not directly related, but parallel. I work in post-secondary education and a passion of mine and something I'm involved with is um, training new post-secondary instructors in strong practices and teaching and learning, which just typically does not happen in post-secondary education. But because of everything that's happening in COVID, that seems to be really bubbling up. And I have great hope for um, improvement in that area just because of this situation. And so yeah. um, that kind of transformation and where are we going and what improvements may we see simply because everything's been so shaken up. Similar right. kind of parallel to what you're talking about. Definitely, you know, we used to, we see that the rise now in eBooks and audiobooks because mm -hmm. it's harder to get print books. Um, and, you know, it's harder because, I'll, I'll, you know, there's a lot of publishers that are, uh, will publish at, you know, a warehouse in China, for example. Mm -hmm. And so you have, you know, for a while, we could not get books out of China or anything out of China for that matter. And then there was, you know, some governmental and tariff issues. But um, so that, that's been a real change too, has been the, 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 you know, sort of the back end or the, the machinations of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was on a call back in, in fact, I was talking to, to the author today, who's great, the book is doing well, but in February or March, we, had, we postponed the book. And I remember the publisher saying to him on a call I was on, we don't know how to get books to people who buy them. And his mm -hmm. face just fell, you know, and, and that was such a basic thing. If someone buys a book, how do you get it to them? And they did not know. Mm -hmm. uh, now they do, and now it worked out, but a lot of the workflows have changed. Um, I don't know if they're ever going to go back, frankly, right. to what they were prior. Maybe they don't need to. Right. Just, it's a very fascinating. It is. And troubling to some extent, but but we we just block out the outside world and just focus on our <laughs> stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will send. Um, afterwards, I will send over these these Canva graphics I was talking about. Uh, that'll show you the way the blog tours look. And you'll be able to actually see if you, if you are on, if you look at these graphics, you'll be able to go to the blogs that are named and look at how they, how they actually did it. And I think it'll give you a good sense of that. And then if there's any questions that you may have after that, please feel free to let me know. I'm happy to, happy to answer. Okay, well, thank you, thank you. very thank much. Thank you very much. My pleasure. A lot of information. You, Excellent, my pleasure, keep writing. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, everybody. Um, next week, I don't know, Brandy, do you know who's up next week? I uh, can't remember. Uh, I, don't um, I knew until you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, I don't remember. Still, so. Somebody talking about self publishing. Okay. So I will be two here. more to tune in to. Yep, Brandy will be the co-host. Victor will be back. So, Well, you did a great job tonight hosting. Thanks. I yes. didn't really know what I was doing, but... You look like you did. <laughs> you look like you did. So, there you go. So, yeah. so as long as this recording works, it'll all be good. Yeah. And it's showing its recording on my end, so we're it good. Is. Yeah. Yep. Good night, all. Okay. Good night, Good night. Good night Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks Good again. Week. And I should be back.